Okay, so this is a nice little property of fractions here. Basically what we're saying is if you take the sum 1 plus a half plus a third plus a quarter and so on up to 1 over n, and we write this as a single fraction, we simplify that fraction, it's always going to be of the form an odd number divided by an even number, as long as our n is greater than or equal to 2. So you can see when n is 1, this isn't going to work, you just have 1 over 1. But then, for example, when you've got n equals 2, we do 1 plus a half, we get 3 over 2, which is indeed odd divided by even. Then when n is 3, we do 1 plus a half plus a third. Then when we write this as a single fraction and simplify, we get 11 over 6, which is again of this form odd divided by even. So now to prove this result, it's crying out for a proof by induction, but you might actually find if you assume that the statement is true for n minus 1, then try and show that it's also true for n, it's quite difficult to do this. So what we'll do instead is a slightly different variant where we do strong induction. So basically all we need to do here is assume that the statement is true, not just for n minus 1, but for all the numbers less than or equal to n minus 1, so for 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n minus 1. What we'll actually do as well is we'll take n equals 2 and n equals 3 as part of our base case. So we'll come back to this later why we need to include a second term. Okay, so now we need to prove that this sum going up to n is indeed of the form odd divided by even when we simplify. And the first step in the proof is just we're going to write this sum, split it in two into the sum of all of the odd terms. So 1 over 1 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 and so on up to 1 over the largest odd number less than or equal to n. So there's a nice compact way of writing this, which is 2 times the ceiling function of n over 2, then minus 1. So it doesn't really matter about the notation here, this is just a nice way of writing it, but all we care about is that we've got the sum of all of our odd numbered terms. Then we're going to do the same thing for even numbers, so a half plus a quarter plus a sixth, going all the way up to now a nice compact way of writing the largest even number, less than or equal to n, is just 1 over 2 times the floor function there, of n over 2. So if you're interested you can verify that both of these formulas work, they do indeed give you the largest odd or even number less than or equal to n, but that doesn't really matter, all that matters is we've got the sum of the odd terms and the sum of the even terms. Okay, So what we'll do next is we'll write the odd terms, just leave those as they are, and then with the even terms what we're going to be able to do is take out a factor of 2, and this is the really important step that allows us to apply the inductive hypothesis. So we take out our factor of 2, and then think about what we've got left. You've got 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 and so on up to 1 over the floor function of n over 2. So what we can actually do is just write this as a half times the sum from k equals 1 up to the floor function of n over 2 of 1 over k. And we can see this term here in the brackets. We're going to be able to apply the inductive hypothesis here. So the reason we needed to include n equals 3 in part of our base case is if you put in n equals 3, you would have just the sum up to 1, and then this isn't of the form odd divided by even. So we're just including an extra one here, then this is going to work for n greater than or equal to 4. So what we'll do is we'll clear the board, then apply the inductive hypothesis, then hopefully we can show that this sum is indeed of the form odd divided by even after we simplify. So now we've written this in a different form. What we'll do is, for convenience, we'll write the sum of all of our odd terms as a over b after it's been simplified. And we'll do the same thing for the sum of our even terms. After we add these and simplify, we'll write this as c over d. So this turns out to be quite useful, because now our sum we know is a over b plus a half c over d. But then by our inductive hypothesis, we know that c over d, when this is simplified, is going to be an odd number divided by an even number. So we can write this as a over b plus a half times, and then just informally we're going to write this as odd divided by even, so an odd number divided by an even number. And this is nice because now 1 times an odd number is still odd, 2 times an even number is still even, so again informally we just write this as a over b plus an odd number divided by an even number. So what we'll do next is we'll cross multiply to turn this into a single fraction. So this isn't necessarily simplified, but we get a times an even number plus b times an odd number, and then in the denominator we've got b times an even number. And this is particularly nice because we can still tidy this up a little bit more, so a times an even number, this is always going to be an even number because a is a whole number. We don't know what b is, so we've still got to write this as b times an odd number. Then in the denominator, this b times an even number, this is going to be an even number. So at this point this is particularly interesting because now you can actually observe that it's sufficient to prove that b is odd. 
because then this gives us, even though this isn't necessarily simplified, we have an odd number divided by an even number unsimplified. But then when we simplify this, I'll explain in a sec, this is still going to be an odd number divided by an even number. So we need to think what happens when you simplify a fraction. Well, you have to divide your top and bottom by a common factor. So let's think what happens when you divide an odd number by a whole number. Well, this it's going to stay odd. There's no way you can divide an odd number by something and get an even number. So the odd number in the numerator stays as it is. Then our even number in the denominator. It is possible to divide an even, even number by something and get an odd number. But at some point along the way, you'd have to divide by 2. But of course, we've got to divide by a common factor of both of these. And we can't actually divide this by 2 or d divide it by an even number because the numerator is odd, so 2 isn't a factor of that. So actually, whatever we divide by when we're dividing by a common factor, this even number is going to remain even at every step. So this is really key to the proof, is the fact that if you've got an odd number divided by an even number, and then we simplify this fraction, it's still going to remain as odd divided by even. So now just to finish off, we need to show that our sum of all of these odd fractions, when we write this as a over b, a simplified fraction, we need to show that the denominator b is odd. Okay, so unsimplified, if we just add all of these together by cross-multiplying, we'll get something in the numerator, we don't care so much about that, but in the denominator you'll have 1 times 3 times 5 and so on, times lots of odd numbers, then times your final odd number 2, ceiling n over 2, minus 1. Okay, so in the denominator here, this is definitely an odd number because it's just a product of lots of odd numbers. We don't know what's in the numerator, but in the denominator we've got an odd number. So if you think now, this isn't necessarily simplified, but we can use the same sort of argument as before, where if you think about simplifying this, you divide by a common factor. We've got an odd number in the denominator at the moment, and then if we divide this by another integer, it's going to remain odd. So this actually shows then that b has to be odd. So whenever we simplify this, the denominator is going to remain odd. Then we can conclude, we've shown that b is odd, so this tells us that our sum is even plus odd times odd divided by even. So this tells us once it's all been simplified that our sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k is indeed of the form an odd number divided by an even number after simplifying.